Uh, Camille certainly has the playmaking ability to do that. And here we go. Red hope, side bands I, already I hope changed it is up, one, Rib. Remember, that's not a Rengar. That's not a Camille. And that's not, <laughs> that's a, not LeBlanc. a LeBlanc. No, it's not. Could be. Could be wearing a cloak. <laughs> I don't see. No, it's fans. Uh, but we do see the, the Camille continuously going from the side of CLG as Darshan just may not feel comfortable about that, as well yeah. as the composition has to be built around it that works as well. And, and it's also something where generally blue side bans have looked this way, where it's like, if you're not willing to first pick it, you ban it, yeah. right? Because you don't want to give something over like that in the first rotation to your opponent. For sure. Uh, so if you don't want to first pick that Camille, it's not going to get back to you again. Flame or someone is going to take it pretty much for sure. But a lot of changes already, you know, neither of the OP3 have been in here. And now it's CLG's turn, you know, they kind of have to make a decision. Are they going to ban out one of them? They have decided to do yep. that to try to force, perhaps, a Rengar ban. If Immortals do not want to ban out the Rengar, CLG has the option to first pick it. But that said, Xmithy has not looked good on Rengar whatsoever. So yep. I was a little surprised to see them ban out the LeBlanc instead of something like the yep. Rengar and force their opponents to do it for them. Very true. Having that can sometimes be a decider. The Rengar has a bit more of a identifier when you're about to yeah. get zeroed out. LeBlanc's just over the wall, so they don't want that power and, in and the see, game. But they do take the Rengar still. Do, right? You know, had CLG banned out Rengar, you know, they probably could have forced a LeBlanc ban from Immortals because they might not want to give that over. Um, but obviously, CLG is comfortable with this, and we yeah. may see an improved Xmithy on that Rengar. You know, he was comfortable to lock it in. He played it a couple times last week, didn't yeah. look great, but maybe getting more practice time in on it. It's certainly something you have to get comfortable with, and it has a lot less safety in 7.3 because you do not get the CC immunity on right. your Tower W. It breaks crowd control, uh, but you can get re-slowed up, re-stunned right. right after there. It's harder to get out. Nice little change there. Quality of life for, I'd say, everybody else but jungle For the opponents <laughs> <laughs> who are getting one shot. At least you know he's going to die after he one shot. Beautiful shots change. A uh, lot of power picked up here in Rumble and Jin on the side of Immortals. So top pick there for Flame as well as for Cody Sun and any idiot in the bot. And we'll see Jace getting locked in here. It can be flexed. We've seen it go back and forth, usually to that mid lane. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are starting to realize that it's just working better in mid lane, at least in North America. Uh, there has not been much top lane J success, but it has been looking a lot better for the teams coming out of mid. Obviously, this is a flex pick. Rumble, you could even say, is one as well. It's possible for it to jungle. We have seen that in EU a fair bit. Uh, not really expecting that from Dardoch mm -hmm. whatsoever, but it's something you still have to keep at least in mind. Then this is another one, even Nautilus. These are all potential flexes, right? Nautilus, it's, most people are going to be thinking Nautilus top, uh, Jace mid, that's yeah. obviously the, the, the standard there, but Nautilus can still go support. You have seen that in professional play, and it's, you can make flexes uh, if that is something that you need to it do. It actually what first kind of triggered in my head because of the hooks, the initiation, something Aphromoo can still get himself yeah. in on and have a powerful support lane yeah. to assist Stick, say, and Graze is picked up on the other side for Dardoch. Something we actually saw Smithy tending to in past splits. I mean, Graves is going to that, go that rank right now. Yep. Like, he is getting so popular in, in high elo solo queue as well as competitive play now. Uh, he was already a very strong early jungler because he takes almost no damage. Uh, pretty much no matter what camp he does, you can knock back the monsters, you can kite them out very, very easily. And the lethality builds are very strong on him. So a lot of flexibility for Graves to do what he wants. Lethality strong? No. <laughs> no. Haven't heard that one before. Stop it. Uh, second ban phase. Saw Sivir Zed actually on the side of Chronologic Gaming, as we got a little bit of Zed yesterday from Dignitas. And uh, the Malzahar ban. So what are we looking for the side of Chronologic Gaming? Probably going to be an Ash uh, coming through for, for CLG, unless they want to go another route. It's interesting yep. that Immortals are not worried about the Ash, because that had traditionally been considered, you know, one of the OP3 AD carries. Uh, instead, they do ban out Sivir, which had been gaining uh, some priority in professional play. 6A in particular has been playing it more. People like it against the Jin because you have such a heavy push advantage. Yep. You can negate a lot of the laning power uh, from the Jin just simply by shoving him in. Uh, that's not going to be on the table here, though. So this, unless it's an AD carry, kind of not going to tell you too much of where things are going in this one. The last pick is going to. Karma picked up for Ole. Yeah, so Immortals are going to be saving their mid lane pick for last. Yep. Uh, to be able to kind of get that counter matchup. We are going to get the, the draft rounded out here for CLG. It should be a support and an AD carry, you would think, unless they want to do a strange flex here right. uh, with that Nautilus. But Ash is the expected pick. Still very strong. Hasn't been changed to 7.3. Not considered on the tier of some of the lethality AD carries, but still very solid, and, and yeah. you know what you're getting from it. Some big arrows. Hopefully the hit. 
say Ash Arrows are actually pretty on point this year for most AD carries and bot laners. Oh, the Soraka lock in. All right. Back. Soraka is back. And that is going to be a Nautilus in the top lane. Interesting pickup. Soraka can, can work quite well in laning phase. A lot of it comes down to where the poke goes from the Karma, right? If the Karma is able to hit uh, the Soraka with her Qs and harass the Soraka out, attack the Soraka's health, that becomes a much tougher lane for CLG. Whereas if the Karma is only able to hit the Ash and the Ash is trading back into them, then the Soraka can spend her health uh, to heal that Ash back yeah. up and it, it generally becomes a health positive trade for CLG. So that's really what they are looking for. It is likely going to be the Jace mid of the Nautilus top, Orianna locked in. Um, a lot of AP damage in the solo lanes from Immortals, but they have double AD carry as well. This is a very squishy composition, but they, they have speed ups from the Orianna, speed ups from the Karma, so they can kite in, they can kite out. Yeah. Uh, and they have powerful engage when they want to look for it with the Jin ultimate plus the Rumble ultimate. Not gonna have too much ability power coming in the side of Common Logic Gaming. So easy for Immortals to kind of mitigate on that side. But if CLG gets ahead of the game, the IMT may not be able to scramble fast enough. And the, the thing is generally all physical compositions are criticized because hey, they're just gonna build so much armor, but who on Immortals is really gonna be able to itemize that, right? That's true. There's not a lot uh, of, of tankiness here. You could see Zonias coming out and things like that, but it's not something you really have to worry about uh, for CLG. So their composition is not gonna kind of get a disadvantage because of that. And both teams have crafted themselves some pretty powerful comps. This is, I believe, the first time we've seen Flame on Rumble so far. I have to get confirmation on that, but uh, you know, he has a pretty good matchup for himself and Flame, this would be a new type of champion for him. You know, he has played yeah. a lot of tanks. He's played Fiora kind of split push type champions. This is an AP team fight type champion, uh, but it also can really get lane priority and bully some of these tanks out. Absolutely. We know Flame for being so mechanically kind of uh, advanced in lane, being able to get those few CS leads, make sure the turret, their wave's always pushing and be the first one out to affect the rest of the game. We'll see if it can be matched. Well, we'll see if they just fight each other in the top lane. It's what we're looking for. We're going to be heading into our first game of the day here. Game one, Counterlogic Gaming versus Immortals. And we are on to the Rift. We'll see what these two teams have for each other. Who he taking that Jace to mid lane for Pole Belter's Oriana. We talked to him about his stats within the previous week. They've been on the up and up. And we'll see if Pole Belter can kind of keep that consistency in the play as the team tries to come together as a whole here and not just kind of have one star player a game. Yeah, I mean, they really do need Pope Belter to be consistent. And Immortals has been kind of surging. They've been getting better and better, but they need the consistency from Pope Belter because although he's had a bad gear so far, uh, people are quick to forget the fact that this was most people's number two mid laner last year. You know, most people actually had him ranked above Jensen, uh, just below Bjergsen. So he was considered one of the very, very best and they're looking for him to get back to that form. If he can get to that form, if Flame can be playing well, if Dardock can be playing well, the top side of the Immortals map is gonna look very powerful. I mean, he offers so much. You see Pole Belter, it could be five weeks in and he's got 10 to 11 unique champions played in that mid lane and he still continues to do it. Over five, at least this uh, split already. So he offers so much to the team. Can they start to build compositions around it? And as you say, can he continue consistency with his play? Yep. Little hit from Huhi to start things off. Love taps in the mid lane, and we are off and running. Well, Mortals are actually doing a little cheeky run. They're gonna try to poke out Huhi here. That's actually pretty obnoxious. That's a lot of damage down on Huhi at level one. Um, they're not really even gonna lose anything for this, I don't think, because they should be able to get back to the bot side pretty quickly after that. So that's actually pretty nice play from the Immortals bot lane, giving uh, Pope Belter a little bit of an advantage there to start things off. And this is going to be actually the second game uh, for Flame on Rumble so far this split. This is the first Soraka in all of NALCS uh, this year. A quick ping on that bot lane as they know that he has a ward over. So we're going to see Smithy now share the other side of the jungle. We'll probably be playing top to bottom here for a little bit. We'll see how that affects mid lanes. We've been seeing a lot of graves. I say a lot of graves, but some graves do level twos very fast to that mid lane. It seems like Immortals has used a, a bot lane to kind of add that damage and give Dardoch free run here. Yeah, and the question here becomes how much do they take away from the opponent's jungle? Uh, sometimes you get nervous, you back out after one camp mm -hmm. uh, where your opponent full clears your side of the jungle, and that's where you can start to get some edges here. Um, and Dardoch <laughs> is actually moving up towards the top side, uh, so he's just going to get the two camps. We'll see if Smithy decides to go for the Gromp as well, or if he's just going to take two camps and, and get out of there himself. Aphromoo 
Nicely harassing and zoning out Immortals. Not too much pressure yet. They have a wave to clean up. Oh, Ooh. you gotta be careful there, bud. Did That's he? a lot of damage. He's got flash. He's, he might just be dead. He He's went dead. for an all-in thinking the mana would be perfect. Oh, it's gonna be Pole Belter! One more shot to Siege Minion. So, who he said, I have, I'm just gonna go back, I'm gonna teleport in, I'll be fine to spend my mana in and out. And no, you weren't. That was, that was really bad from who he, I mean, he hammer forms in there, he wanted to shove the wave, as you said, and then teleport back, but a pole Belter had mana, he has the summoners available, uh, and he's gifted an easy first blood. Just brutal from who he, I'm not sure what he was thinking. I mean, you know he doesn't have a kill summoner, but the exhaust is there on support and mid for the Rengar play, yeah. and then that just keeps you in range. Yeah, and Pope is gonna get out as well. Really nice play from Woo! him to capitalize on that, uh, just barely surviving from the cannon. <laughs> uh, but even if he dies there in a trade, his lane is pushing in, and he would get the first blood goal, so that would still be worth it for him, and in this case, it's just that much better. Uh, but that said, farm is heavily in the advantage of CLG. They're actually tied on gold with the mm -hmm. kill and first blood going over to Immortals, so. Uh, definitely some problems arising there, as you can look at the CS in mid lane and bot yeah. lane. That is mostly what's making that up. And jungle as well. Smithy's gonna have to get out of there, though. Oh! The flash hit forward. Almost got the caught, uh, the catch on the wall, I should say, to the left. But he does find a Smithy flash for flash on that en uh, engage. 26 to 23. Yeah, his flame continues to add it, making sure that flame spitter doesn't push his lane, but he can do it just outside. It's, it's interesting as well to see him go for the Ruby Crystal start. Most people do like to start Doran Shield yeah. instead. Uh, this is going to get him faster towards a Leandries, and Dardoch is behind the CLG bot lane. So Flare Flash. So They're going to try to turn this around. Dardoch has no Flash. Remember, he may have gone too aggressive. TP has come in. They hit it. Darshan's in. Darshan, no. Red buff goes to Stixay. Ale's going to be stuck in here. That exhaust and Flash are down, but they don't want it. They like the lane advantage and the kill they have received. Dardoch, however, going lane to lane, blowing flashes, cost him his life. It certainly does. He did not have that flash and didn't respect the possibility of a turnaround there. Smithy will have to hold this turret. I should get out there and do just that, pick up some of this farm and experience. But still, nice TP from Darshan. Uh, commits his resources from top lane to bot lane. It gets them not only a kill, but a red buff on Stixay. And remember, we'd already talked about how far ahead the bot lane already was on farm. He is almost doubling his opponent's CS, has a kill, has a red buff, is going to get first turret. And this and is getting disgusting. He's going to get a kill on Ale. That's They're going to get, get another. Sean staying alive. Shield coming up and the heal. They get the hit on Ale. Very nicely done. Stixay taking aggro of the turret as CLG patiently walked these engages in and out of success. Dardoch just coming back from going down. Only here to clear the wave. Oh, let's be God. careful. Stixay even got solo gold for the turret there. He's the only one who got the local gold on that first turret. 650 more gold in his pocket. After that, he has 3,200 gold to his opponent's 1,500. He is more than doubling Cody Sun's net worth. And this is just disgusting from CLG. Such good play from Darshan. And even Stixay here holding the yeah. turret aggro to the last second to make sure they could pull that off without even giving up one death. And they're out to an astronomical lead in the bot lane. So it's going to be very hard for Immortals bot lane to actually come back into that. You know, when you're this far ahead, it's even dangerous for Dardoch to come down and help them. Yep. Uh, because you're in the kind of position where you can just get straight up 2v3. I mean, look at the combat power across these 80 carries. It's Zerka Greaves and a BF sword and a dagger to just Swifty Boots. He essentially has purchased no combat power whatsoever. Uh, it's insane how far behind he is. Knowing he has to get away now from Stixay. 2-0-1 in that bot lane. Fantastic start for Counter Logic Gaming. Didn't even really need the help of Xmithy down there. Fast TP by Darshan. He has fallen behind in CS on the top side, but picked up quite a bit in the bottom. And it looks like he gets to stay there, so not too much of a switch. Yeah, they have set the bot lane to top for CLG. Uh, and it's the Erling Haunty guys there for Flame, as, as predicted with that Ruby Crystal. He's able to get that spell pen very quickly, so uh, we'll be able to very fast get to his double spell pen items. And there's a lot of Immortals members around the top side. Uh, if CLG gets too far up here, they could get taken down. They have the safety. They already have Sight Ward onto, or Sight Stone, I should say, onto Aphromoo. There's no reason they should be able to have a flank here coming in from the side of Immortals. Back off nice and safe. They're going to place some of those wards, and it looks like he may even get an arrow towards Pole Belter in middle. His flash is about 20 to 30 seconds from coming up. It certainly is. And we also have to track the fact that Smithy is now six. They're 
Unfortunately for them, waiting on a ward, but they were looking to try to pick off Flame uh, as he came out to, to pick up that farm. He's not going to do so, but they will be able to take away this red buff. And that first Rengar ultimate is very important. It's quite a long cooldown at those early levels. You want to start getting your passive stacks, uh, getting that bonus AD, and really get rolling on, on that champion. So we'll see if Smithy's able to make that first ultimate work, because it's going to be a big one. Sharing some fruits. Dardok knowing oh, nice control of this jungle is imperative. Yeah, it gets to kind of cut out the side. Yeah, he puts it right in the very corner of the mm -hmm. bush, so it actually spots around that corner and does catch that ward. So it's a nice little warding spot there uh, from Dardok, uh, thinking of the little things instead of kind of just placing it in the center of the bush where he would have missed that ward. Little things like that can make a big difference, can allow those later ganks to pay off, and Smithy is still kind of hunting around here, waiting for his first opening. Teleport just about up for Darshan. Dardok kind of kept things quiet after his first fight in the bot lane, also waiting for his flash to come back up. Seems like he's going to relieve some pressure here on the top side ever since the lane swap. We haven't seen much, and that's why. Lots of wards. Yeah, really good warding by both teams. And uh, CLG is quite a bit ahead, but they, they do want to extend it, right? Uh, you get that kind of 1,500, 1,700 gold lead that you get on your 80 carry super early game. That is massive. But you wait 5, 10 minutes, it's, it's not as big of a deal percentage-wise. Yep. So they do want to try to push the pace and get things done. Uh, and CLG may try to make a rotation elsewhere, go mid lane, look for their first Ash Arrow uh, to try to get a kill and then snowball another turret. They would like to do that. And it looks like they are heading up towards mid side, at least for now. But... Uh, Afro is going to stay going towards mid and Stix A looking like he may go right back top. Almost completely happy. I'd say they are happy, mm -hmm. but not completely. They still want to push this lead forward. They can be firing arrows wherever they want, but do not want to catch themselves off guard in a fight. So, yeah. Props to them for staying safe, but how safe can you stay? Right? You got this rotation pretty fast. Cody Sun and Ollie are playing very laid back here in the lane, so you can almost take advantage of that. What I would like to see CLG do is, yes, there's lots of wards around the sides, um, but have Smithy come up for a lane gank. Go straight up the lane, shoot the Ash Arrow out, you hit the Ash Arrow. Yeah. Rengar comes ulting in. That should be a pretty easy kill if you can connect, and uh, that's something that they really should be looking for. When you're trying to gank from the sides on Rengar, you're more likely to spot out those wards. Lane wards are just not much of a reality at this point in the game, so Smithy should be able to look for that. I'm going to say there may be a moment of it. They've disjointed the backs of Cody's son and Ole. It doesn't look like anything will come of it too quick. Kuhi easily clearing waves in mid lane now that he has blue buff transfer over to him from McSmithy. So that means everybody is just on the top side of the map and CLG is trying to sniff out an attack. Ooh, they may go for the four man mid here. Uh, they know that a lot of people are top side. They're going to look for a four man dive, five man even, uh, as Darshan's coming up. So they're going to pressure this turret. If Hovelder does not leave, he should die. And if he does leave, uh, they will get the turret. So CLG looking. Whoa! Aphromoo's got that turret, Aggo. They get out this time and the minion wave is forward. Flame is here though. He actually came from the bottom side of the map. Immortals. Yeah, CLG takes a little too long, and Immortals reads it very nicely. Yeah, that was really nice. It does cost him a couple ultimates, uh, so the threat of that return play is there. And look at that damage. Ouch. <laughs> well, shields, shields a little late. But we know you meant. We know it's not you meant. the thought that counts in League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, oh yeah, I should probably do that now. <laughs> So now Stixa gets a little bit of free time at the top turret. Smithy will help him, and they finally get Immortals to kind of draw out of the lanes. They may be able, may be able to add a little bit more pressure. Top side, Smithy is here. Remember, he still has that ultimate. They could catch Karma as he rotates up. Oh, not going to fight. Close. It's a good thought. That would have been the opening they were looking for. Immortals also doing a good job of rotating themselves through the jungle, keeping themselves safe. So let's see. Control ward. Darshan! Not going to be the CC. Boop. Just gets out with a hot foot. Fight on to Ole. Or should they Ole. I'm going to do it all season. But Darshan easily gets himself out. Choose his top side so they have power in numbers. And Immortals cannot stand tall here. Second turret without being answered here from Counter Logic Gaming as they run the map around IMT. It's actually a really nice TP from Darshan. Usually in situations like that, uh, people do use TP to get out, but they just TP back to their base or whatever. Mm -hmm. He actually uses TP for a macro play while escaping from the gank. 
So it became a bit of a win-win for him there. And he actually should get down to bot lane uh, to pick up most of the minions uh, by the time Flame has actually pushed it in. So yep. Rashawn has been looking great. Yes, he is down quite a bit in CS, but both his TPs have gotten turrets, have gotten kills, uh, and honestly, they're, they're well yeah. worth it. And he's really not super relying. He likes to CS, but can still be a beefy tank without as much. Oh! Oh! Woohoo! Oh, are squeezing tight, stays alive. He's gonna be able to walk out of that one. Cody's son takes control of the lane. And it looks like he's gonna get a little help from Ole here, but I don't know who, who he's done. They have Aphromu and Xmithy just behind him. On the hunt is not on. It looks like he's just trying to flex his muscles. Oh my gosh. This Asher is exactly where you wanna too. be as a poke team. They're, they're looking say as to try to force down another turret. CLG is just pushing to take more and more away. And they are doing a good job of fighting to extend the advantage, because they know they need to do so uh, with this kind of composition. And Hui, besides his early blunder, giving away that, that first yeah. kill, uh, he's been on point with his shot class. He's actually up in farm. Uh, he has been poking out Immortals, which is allowing CLG to posture aggressively for oh. the turrets. Like, you know what's here with these shot classes? Like, just kidding. <laughs> that was, that was good. Forcing. So he gets out. Fog of War is who he's friend. We'll see if CLG can keep that Fog of War against Immortals here because he's just been able to sit on the side and tear them apart. And that is a really good call, Riv, because a lot of it has been due to the vision that they are fighting so heavily for. So you know, you're not able to land as many of these shot glass without the vision control yep. from the team. Avril sweeps out the bush in the blue side jungle of Immortals. That allows Huhi to move over there and get some free pot shots down. So it's definitely a team effort, uh, but Huhi is deserving of some credit. Yeah, he's threading the needle on a lot of these, especially just on the outside of uh, the box, making Immortals think twice about their positioning. Back and forth, go Stixa and Afro, buddy, buddy, but they're not gonna be needed at the Dragon. Cloud Drake over to CLG to start things off here, so all objectives in their favor. Just not the lanes as much. They've fallen a bit behind in CS. Stixa helps to bring that back up with the power the bot lane had as we recall that teleport from Darshan in the early game, and that's really all CLG has been able to move the map and continue this pressure with early vision. The Cloud Dragon is actually pretty nice in particular for Rengar as well. I found simply because having the extra speed with your ultimate, you yeah. need the closing power to be able to actually get in there and use the ultimate because you get worn from quite far away. So having the extra out of combat move speed uh, can really help you close the gap uh, and get those proper ultimate targets. Uh, CLG does need to keep pressing though, keep using those Ash Ultimates, keep looking uh, for their opportunities. Uh, you don't want this game to stagnate. You don't want Immortals to be able to just kind of get back in it. Mid lane sitting on just about 600 HP. It seems like one approach from Chronologic Gaming would take that down. See, a bit better as you feed the AD carry on a silver platter. It looks nice. It's got to be feeling really good too. Your positioning gets better. You don't feel like you need to get in for a certain little shots. It's the smaller things. You always go in, you feel good behind your team. It is, and one, one thing that's really big about the lead for Ash in particular in this matchup is that you're supposed to be disadvantaged against lethality AD carries in the early game. So Stixay, because of his big early game lead, is kind of circumventing a lot of his weak yeah. spot, right? He's gonna be quickly to that Infinity Edge plus Hurricane combo where you really start to get strong because you have the crit multipliers, your auto attacks get very big. Uh, they are starting to control the lanes and Darshan pushes out top, moves to mid, and they're gonna look to finish off the turret. They should get it here. Pressure on the bot lane by two as well. They could just choose to slide right down there. Stixay backing up. Nice, I think Stixay's going for a quick ward clear. Saying we don't want teleports behind us. However, they don't know about a few more. So it looks like the team's slowly putting their vision down, keeping it for the advantage of who he shot blast allowing him to just farm the other lane. CLG controlling very nicely here. Just 17 minutes into the game. They're looking at second tier turrets on the side of Immortals. Flame going straight towards that Zonia is not actually complete the Leandries. Uh, this is a pretty aggressive build. It is something where you can kind of flash in there with the overheated yeah. flame splitter, pop that Zonia, try to get the big damage down. Uh, he's looking. Whoa, half a move. Almost gets walked out of that one on the equalizer. It's really just kind of, a, this is our space. Usually that ultimate's for the engage, but they're just trying to gain some room for themselves here. Afro has no flash though. Ooh, wish down. They're actually gonna bait this one back in. That gets who he room. Hits him back, percent damage, then goes to XP oh! as he flashes the bola forward. Quick fingers by Pole Belter to get himself out. Yeah, trade of flashes there. They do get the kill though. Uh, Darshan fails his flash. Oh no. 
It happens. A little bit unlucky, but they're still going to get the turret. Sandbox. <laughs> That's why we have that now. Turret's going to go down, but quick movements here. Ole getting caught up. Bali is going to follow through, but it's Hoogie that picks himself up the kill. Actually, first one of the game for him as he's been doing a lot of damage work. Finally gets a result on that damage. Ole had no business sticking around there. The jungle was already dead. The rest of his team's already backing off. Here is the original play. Dardock wants the assassination on Afro move because he knows he is flashless. Uh, but who he is ready here. And the wish keeps Afro alive. He can go in aggressive. Smithy's already collapsing. Darshan already TPing. You can see how much faster CLG is responding to the play. Flame never even using his TP whatsoever. There's That was not even close. Come on, Darshan. Either way, Ole gifts it right back as he comes back up. Notice the rest of his team is already backed off. What are you doing positioning here? Nice. You did about 50 damage. Too bad you died for it. <laughs> it looked cool. It looked cool. It's about... Uh, Good skin. Wasn't it kind of about the thought that counts? Remember that before? Thought does not count. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's what you said. <laughs> thought does not count in League of Legends. It. It's the result, and the result was him <laughs> beating Riv. It is happening. Two kills on Dardok, two kills on Ole. Dardok can't seem to get what he needs. Still getting a bit of power, and we saw that damage onto Aphromoo. But Aphromoo is now toying with these guys with those wishes and being able to heal himself. They're just set up for Huki and Xmithy. Yeah. Wardra pushed forward, though. Immortals has some room to play with. They're all looking. Do they, though? And Smithy gets hit up. W down. He realizes he can't get out too quick. Welcome, Matt. Goes down for CLG. Dardock's trying to enter through as well. Good volleys back are going to keep them safe and just out of the range of Curtain Call. They've split on this turret. Four and two Ash without any minions coming in. They're going to go deep on this one. Pobelt gets hit. Ash Arrow to the chin, and he goes down. It is Afro that finally falls. Dardock in turret ranges. It's or Darshan gonna keeps him there. And Ale is going to get hit up. Double kill now for Stixay. They won't chase Cody. They probably won't catch Flame on the Scrap Shield. But like you said, Immortals did not make it out happy. They certainly did, and I, I think... Uh, Flame should be able to get out here. Uh, that was a greedy play from CLG, going aggressive without the TP from Darshan. They were at a TP disadvantage. Yep. Still, they go three for two as they are very far ahead. And Immortals, you can see they're feeling the pressure. They're trying to force a play on the bot side because they feel like they're too far behind. And they, they felt like they had to get something done. You know, their, their advantages really lie just in the farm for a flame. He has prioritized staying in lane and, and getting that CS advantage, but he's never been able to actually turn it into anything. And if you yep. can't convert that into something for your team, then the roaming that Darshan has done is way more valuable. Let's see this fight again here and how CLG turns it around. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely way too aggressive from Smithy. They don't have TP. Rumble was already TPing in when he goes in. Uh, but then this dive, yes, it's a five versus three, but you know Darshan is roaming down. They're all still pretty healthy. Ultimates are available for CLG, uh, so they can turn this around quite well, and and they are able to commit. I really like this play uh, from Huhi, actually using the Q and the Flash to go from one side of the fight to the other, escape the danger, as well as getting the damage in to kill off Belter. So that was very well played uh, by Huhi on the back end of that fight, but a little too high speed from Smithy to start things off. So, jacking for, for a position now. It looks like Immortals knows they are in the fog of war if they stay in this side of the jungle. They're not too sure about what happens once they get into the river. So, forced to back off. Counter Logic Gaming can take a better position here to actually just take an entry to the fight instead of a back and forth. This should get hit up pretty quick. Immortals slowly stepping in. Control Ward goes down. Looks like Darshan's just gonna try to beat shield. Good divide by Immortals. That's Xmithy grabbing it. Shockwave only onto Darshan. CLG separating nicely. It looks like they're just gonna kind of leave him out to dry. Oh. Huge damage from Goofy. Do they decide to go back in? That would have been a very big to the skies on three members, but dangerous in melee form if you're Jace. They're coming around. Smithy is on it's, the side. Flame is slow, low. It's a slow roll from McSmithy. He's keeping it very quiet. Didn't come in fast. Quickly takes out Flame on that one. And Immortals is trying to get out without losing any more members. Stixay doing what he can to push the lane down. And they're else dancing Immortals so they can't get in more than they are trying to fight. Obviously, McSmithy going down. Who he finally takes to it. And that has pulled Stixay over. So mid pressure's off. But Immortals is just getting toyed with right now. Very explosive fight, though. Lasting quite a while there. Ends up being the dragon and one kill for CLG. Two kills for Immortals. Uh, so they do go a little bit gold positive, but the stat weight on that dragon is certainly worthwhile here. And CLG able to pick up the dragon. 
and then they really just kind of have to back off. As Darkthron took so much initial damage there, the Jin ult plus that Rumble yeah. ult, very effective. But the fact that they didn't actually hit any of the big damage dealers means CLG can still hang around, still look for fight here. As they are able to poke people out, they're able to find flame, kind of split off from the team, as Immortals did not do a good job sticking together. They should have been able to walk out of this fight as a five-man squad, Scott free there. Uh, but they get split up, they get picked off, and then Dardock wants to be able to pick up this kill. Smithy sectioned off, he goes down, so pretty cool Flash. fight. Also interesting to note that Six A actually went for S Retriever instead of IE first. Generally speaking, when people complete the Hurricane before uh, their BF sort right. item, they are going for IE because Essence Weaver in and of itself is pretty cost effective. So people generally would grab the Essence Weaver first if they are going that. So a little bit of a swap up in the build. Uh, still now 6A will be building towards the IE as that third item. And that three item power spike for him is going to be pretty massive as he'll have a lot of crit. He already is picking up a lot of CDR. Uh, and this is going to be a, a pretty beast Ash in these team fights if he doesn't get taken out right off the bat. Well, luckily they do have the Rengar on their side. Dardock's been having a hard time finding that zero out damage. Mm -hmm. And especially with Aphromu now, he can just get the heals that he needs, even if he's not in range, he wishes. Also, Edge of Knights coming out for Xmithy and Guhi. A little more safety in their dangerous plays. As we've seen Xmithy, actually the changes affecting the Rengar, going down yeah. quite a bit more on those engages than usual. Is, but they're Belzer. looking for it. Good flash. Oh, pie to the face for Dardock. Does he go down? Yes, he does. A good stick in by the Equinox from Aphromoo, and he cannot get out. Yeah, that Ash Soraka combo is very powerful. If you land the Ash ultimate, you will get silence rooted. And now CLG are threatening onto the Baron. With the jungler down, they're going to start it up. They can look to turn and fight if Immortals comes in. And Hui is on the side, poking out Pobelter and Flame. Nice hawk shot. Shouldn't be a problem. Obviously, no smite fight. The Equalizer could do a bit of damage. He lays it on the outside, separating the back from the front. Actually very nice, but the team can't get in. Pole Belter, Sombreros, the Shockwave as it comes back to him a little they're too early. They're back on the Baron, it's a And they're trying to go with Smitty very low as he goes into it. Gets the team to come back in. Who he draws Pole Belter. He's going in as Darshan flies over the wall. There's the Shock Blast, the gate coming up. He's waiting on the cooldown, unfortunately. They won't be able to catch Cody some, but CLG come up big on that Baron. CLG just got everything. The fact that they're able to do the Baron in the face of their opponents with this Soraka, healing them back up from that damage, not allowing uh, Smithy to go down in that fight. And now they get the Baron, they get three kills. This is going to be an inhibitor. And honestly, th this could be so much going the way of CLG. They're just astronomically ahead. 25 minutes into the game. First inhibitor turret goes down. Minion waves behind they them with a Baron up. Captive audience slowing him down just a little bit. Three seconds, two seconds on the rest of the members. A full fight from Immortals coming out, but ultimates are down, so they know they're only going with Q, W, and E. And they are going to go hard and go for broke. Flame is in the front. Equinox locks him up. Darshan's there to still be the meat shield. On to Pobel for now. Ranger's focus is on, and Six A has focused a 7-0 and 4 game with the help of his team in the early. And now Tardok goes down in the fountain. Ole can't even find solace or safety as he yells, Ali, Ali, Oxen free. Six A chases into laser range. And they're going to be on the Nexus turret. 26 onto the Nexus, 17 to 5. CLG dismantle Immortals in game one. How is that for a dominant game one from CLG? Closing that out ridiculously fast. Not even 26 minutes in. I mean, they snowballed that game so hard. The whole team looked good, but a lot of credit has to go to Darshan. I actually think he played incredibly well this game. Uh, his TPs were on point. He yeah. was always there for the team with the initiations. And he was the one that was able to snowball them to both the first two turrets, yep. to the massive bot lane lead. Uh, and he, for me, dominated this game, even if it wasn't in the most flashy way. And it, it makes the other people look good. 7 0 5 yep. 6 obviously carrying through the game, but you're right, Darshan, early game, stepped up, played strong, knew he was behind uh, in CS at Flame, and it obviously is not going to matter. You're Nautilus, you need to be up in the front for your team, and he made the plays that allowed him to get that goal to happen. It's, exactly. That's the way we used to see CLG plays around the map. And he let his star shine, right? So it's a 5-1-5 Jace, it's 7-0-5 on the Ash. Those are incredible score lines, but they're enabled by the fact right. that Darshan got them that leads. And, you know, those guys played really well too, mm -hmm. but very, very impressed uh, with CLG's play across the board here. Uh, Smith, he didn't have to do much this game. <laughs> Involved in four out of the 17 kills. Not often you see a jungler 
involved in so little. Yeah. But, I mean, his team his team looked great. He smited the bear, and what else did he have to do, right? That's, that's, that's the win. That's the W right there. For more on that game one, let's send it down to our...